The Air Force Board appointed to investigate the FB-111A accident on October 7, 1970 at Carswell Air Force Base, Texas, has concluded that the aircraft did not experience in-flight structural failure. All essential aircraft systems appear to have been operating normally, and detailed examination of the wreckage did not reveal evidence of in-flight fire. The fire which was observed and reported by eyewitnesses was in all probability the rocket motor's exhaust fire from the air crew escape module. The accident board's investigation did not uncover any malfunction which would necessitate any new inspection or testing of the F-111 fleet. I'm thankful to be back in school and to be able to get my education and I'm just hoping that I will graduate and then there won't be any more trouble at Bell. We view it from this way that certainly the schools and especially our school must take some responsibility for the actions that took place and certainly we will make every effort to make any corrections in the democratic process to see if this doesn't happen. But we must quickly state that in our instance, we feel that the adults, a few adults, uh, were really responsible for this, especially the American Civil Liberties Union. Over the past 20 years, premium income has grown at an average annual rate of 7.7% while the gross national product increased at 6.2% annual rate and disposal personal income after taxes rose at 5.9%. I will explain what Exhibit 5 and evidence in that hearing reflects regarding the income, investment income of these insurance companies, which was introduced into evidence through Mr. McVeigh of our staff, is a summary of 1967, 1968, and 1969 countrywide results of stock insurance company writing all lines of property and casualty business within the state of Texas. The net underwriting profit or loss before federal taxes. And I know, uh, Senator Mosley, that you know what we mean by underwriting loss or profit, but if there's someone in the audience that doesn't, that means the profit or the loss the company has from the premiums it collects on the insurance. That figure for the three-year period showed a net loss on underwritings alone of Before I
President Nixon comes to Dallas tomorrow evening. He comes here to Dallas Market Hall, where the sign outside proudly proclaims, See President Nixon here, 7 p.m. Wednesday. Well, an estimated 20,000 are expected to be here to see our president. Only about 10,000 of those will be able to get inside Market Hall, however, where today workmen are busy putting up everything from television platforms to red, white, and blue bunting to welcome the president. He's expected to arrive Dallas Love Field at about 5.30. He'll motor to the Marriott Motor Hotel, where he'll rest for a few minutes before going to Market Hall. Exactly where his plane will arrive at Dallas Love Field and the route to be taken to the Marriott, well, these things have not been divulged. However, Police Chief Frank Dyson is working very closely with the Secret Service to make those arrangements. Security will be immense. There will be rooftop guards all the way from the airport to the Marriott and certainly all over Market Hall. Secret Service men are here today in full force. To get information from them is like pulling teeth, but they are doing their job. They are preparing to protect our nation's president. He comes here tomorrow evening. You, the public, you're cordially invited. Come one, come all to what has been built as an old-fashioned political rally. Old-fashioned it may be, but he is here to support Representative George Bush and gubernatorial candidate Paul Eggers. Let's not forget that one thing. This is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the Move at Market Hall. We are here. We are not heckling. We are not shouting obscenities. We are here in exactly the form the administration seems to desire for the American people. We stand in protest of all those who would strip us of our constitutional freedoms. Can you hear us, Mr. Nixon? We are here. We cry out against the senseless murders of students in Ohio, Mississippi. We deplore hastily enacted, politically motivated legislation which permits no-knock entry by police, arrest for suspicious behavior, and other acts that have a chilling effect upon individual freedom. Can you hear us, Mr. Nixon? We are here. We mourn all those who have suffered and died in this undeclared and unconstitutional war. Our gags and bindings represent the repression that now pervades a once free nation. We assemble here to protest, but even more to reaffirm our inalienable right as put forth in the Bill of Rights of the Con United States Constitution. We are here, Mr. Nixon and we will not tolerate being bound and gagged. Are you listening, Mr. Nixon? No one here tonight really thinks that that ball game last week in the J.C. Park was the cause for the confrontation. Few people actually believe that that's the reason the black youths went into the War on Poverty Center and caused the problems they caused there. The troubles are long-standing, as they are always between two races. The blacks and the browns don't necessarily like each other very well. That's no secret to anybody. They are trying here in West Dallas to work out their problems, to come to know each other and thus to like each other better. And that's what the meeting tonight was supposed to be for. There were representatives of the Chicano brown community and representatives from the black community here to talk. They are leaders in their communities, and they probably could have accomplished something. They were afraid to try because of the reports of the various news media and because of the observers. They were afraid that perhaps the story might be misconstrued and it might well have been. So they decided to put it off and little was accomplished here tonight. Director Paul Townsend of the police department did restate his position that a crime has been committed and that those who are responsible will be punished if and when witnesses come forth to identify the people involved. That of course is not the entire answer. That is the role the police can play. At some time in the future, hopefully very soon, the black leaders and the brown leaders will sit down again without benefit of a large audience, and they'll hash out their problems, and they all believe they'll eventually resolve them. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move in West Dallas. Emergency measures were activated by Carswell Air Force Base officials on the evening of October 7th of this year. An FB-111 bomber had crashed in an open field near the power station at the far end of Eagle Mountain Lake in Tarrant County. Lieutenant Colonels Robert S. Montgomery and Charles G. Robinson were killed in that crash. Montgomery was commander of the 9th Bomb Squadron here at Carswell. Robinson was the squadron navigator. The crew had reportedly been practicing touch-and-go landings for about three hours and were on final approach for landing when the plane crashed. The control tower operator reported no sign of any trouble before the crash. This morning, 
the 2nd Air Force Base Headquarters at Sparksail Air Force Base in Louisiana made an announcement about the findings of a board looking into the crash. Carswell Air Force Base Information Officer, 1st Lieutenant Thomas Lauterbach, read the statement to Channel 8 News. Department of Defense policy prohibits the disclosure of the actual cause of an airplane crash. The public may never know exactly what happened, but one thing is sure, it was not the aircraft fault. Art Sinclair, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. All Texas cities have some problems. Whether they have a population of 1,000 or 1 million, the problems may be small or of major proportions. All have been aired here in the 58th Annual Conference of the Texas Municipal League meeting in Fort Worth. The major issues discussed deal with ecological areas of air and water pollution and solid waste disposal, law and order, and federal intervention into city affairs. Two Texas cities have their own unique problems to deal with, the tornado-riddled Lubbock and the hurricane disaster areas of Corpus Christi. The mayor of Corpus Christi, Jack Blackman, told me one problem of main concern deals with insurance coverage and settlements after Hurricane Celia. Some of the uh, property owners have not yet had time to get adequate estimates from competent contractors as to the exact amount or reasonable estimate as to their damages. This has delayed some adjustments. Uh, the overriding and more major problem, of course, will be whether the insurance companies will continue to remain on the risk in and near Corpus Christi. A few of the companies have already pulled out, so to speak. There have been some cancellations of insurance. There have been others who have indicated they do not intend to renew the policies when they come up for renewal. But by and large, uh, we are st still expecting the industry to take this type of loss in its stride. We believe the industry is uh, big enough to do so, and after all, this is the business they're in. Dr. James Granberry, the mayor of Lubbock, told the progress in that West Texas city after the killer tornado in May been about five and a half months now since the tornado came in and as I mentioned to a group a few days ago I think the recovery has been both gratifying and instructive gratifying to the point that both state and federal agencies came in in great number and gave us tremendous in rebuilding the tax base we have a tremendous increase in building permits to, to this point this year uh, we're eight million dollars ahead of, uh, excuse me, $9 million at the last count ahead of last year at this particular time, and we have a couple more months to go. The three-day three day, uh, Texas Municipal League Conference will end this evening with a grand ball at the Sheraton Fort Worth Hotel. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. Pending final decision by federal judge William Taylor, the controversy at L.D. Bell High School is over. The Bell affair began with 20 students refusing to resume classes at the end of a courtyard recess. The Board of Trustees of the Hearst Euless Bedford Independent School District decided last night after three public hearings to expel some students until the end of the term, some are out until the end of the year, and others are back in school with no penalties being imposed. Two students who are back in classes today talk with us. They say they're sorry the whole affair happened. And taking part in the uh, rebellion at here? Well, I don't really consider it a rebellion, but I suppose if the rules stated that you can't do this, that you cannot do this, then I won't do it. Teresa, now that you're back in school, how do you feel about the situation that developed here at Bell High School? Well, 
I mean, I'm glad to be back in school and all, and I feel like that nothing was gained out of it, except a lot of trouble, and I'd never do it again. <laughs> do you feel like you stood up for your rights and gained anything out of that? Well, I feel like I wanted to stand up, stand up for my rights, but I didn't gain anything from it. <laughs> School Superintendent Charles Wages lays the blame for the walkout and the controversy on the American Civil Liberties Union. He described how he and the board view the problem. Really, if they would still leave this and work through proper channels with the school officials, that we could have solved the problem. Right now at Bell, the walkout is almost forgotten. The students are worrying about homecoming. Jay Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move at L.D. Bell High School. Ms. Gilliam was chosen by the convention process, that is the calling of the cross-section of uh, black persons, black citizens, not only in the South Town, because we vote at large. And it was through this process that she received the uh, nomination. And therefore, uh, this such a person, if it is to represent the black community, should be on the, uh, be the one that the school board should consider, and not one that's brought forth by a few persons or that's favorable to the white community. Right. In other words, are you saying that Mrs. Gilliam, out of all the five candidates now before the school board, is the people's choice? This is what I'm saying. Are you also